Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah. It's Friday night. It's the Sidetrack Show. Yeah, we're going out tonight. Yeah, it's Memento Mori. Jen's all dolled up. She's in some real fucking sexy outfit. I have to show it off. We'll show it off later. Although, you know, my yeah. corset isn't tightened, so it yeah. doesn't look quite as... Yeah, she's just got some really <laughs> cute, like, leggings and little fucking... Not leggings, what do you call it? Little tights on with little shoes. It, look, it looks cute. Little mini skirt. She's little got, like, tights a, and little shoes. Yeah, she's got a little micro <laughs> mini skirt on with little booty shorts on underneath it. Yeah. Thomas, it's it's his it's his ongoing campaign to get me to just go out in basically underwear. Yeah. <laughs> Unless she wears the better she looks. Yeah. yeah, it's basically like a fishnet <laughs> bodysuit and yeah. like booty shorts and a bra. Yeah. And a corset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're we're going we're going to um we're going to um uh, fucking uh, safe place so there's, there's, it's yeah um, yeah like i said yeah. we're going i wouldn't dream of wearing this to mannequins because yeah. you're just i mean yeah. you're not asking for it but people you're going are to barbarellas gonna... hey yeah. they're not asking for it it's just i have to fight yeah, yeah exactly I have to fight. yeah exactly and i fight there half the time i go pretty much yeah, yeah. I, I could maybe maybe more maybe it's 60 or 70 percent yeah probably <laughs> And it's like not even just fighting, but like just having to tell someone off. Yeah, or threaten somebody. Or threaten somebody I or shove them. Have, or I do sometimes beat them up. Tell them to fuck off or yeah. something. Like it's yeah. usually something like that. You, you, all, you know, I'm fucking, <clears throat> I'm friends with the owner, you know. Big Tom is the owner. A friend of mine, he's an ex-Navy guy. Big old. We've known him forever. Yeah. He's a big old black ex-Navy guy. We met him at Ibar, actually. Who fucking loves, he's goth. He fucking loves uh, Morrissey and shit. He's probably about 6'4". He's a big dude. Yeah. and uh, He looks like a football player, kind of. Yeah. And his security, like his build is like a football player. His security player. is actually smaller than him. He wanted yeah. me, We wanted me to fucking be head of security for a while. Yeah. Teach him to do that. But I'm not the right guy for that. I'd end up in jail. Yeah, you so, probably would. Yeah. <laughs> That's what would happen. Yeah. So I was like, uh, no. And rightfully so. Like, you'd tell me some bullshit, and you'd be like, you ended up in jail because that. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. could, uh, yeah, I could yeah, see Yeah, I'd that. end up in jail because it'd be beating people up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I know my limits. Like, we're going to have to fuck this dude up. He can't come back in here again to me, that kind of shit. He's I would, I would lose my. So I could never be a cop. I've trained cops. Fucking worked for a company that trained cops. Uh, there was a lot of more foreign cops. Uh, in uh, well, I, I can talk about it. I guess I can't talk about clients, but I can talk about in general what what I t what we help teach is. I helped it. I was working for a private company that the main client was a government agency that was helping other countries, and um, what I was mostly doing was teach was working in a department that taught P uh, PBI post blast investigations how to. How to invest? How to investigate a bomb scene as a crime scene, and put that bomb back together? I'm trying to figure out who make it, because just because the bomb goes off doesn't mean it vanishes. It's all there. It's just in pieces. And you got to train guys how to get all those pieces and how to put that back together, and then try to figure out who it is and why they did this and where they sourced this material and how to how to catch this guy. So I forgot what I was talking about. Oh. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could teach cops shit. I would never be a cop. I make a good soldier, but not a good cop. I'm just, if I got frustrated, I'd just kill you. you yeah, know? well, some of them do too. Yeah, uh, some you, of them do, yeah. As you can see. And you know, <laughs> and I came from a military unit, 1st, 327 Recon Platoon, which is only 40 men. You can look it up. It's called Tiger Force in, back in Vietnam. It was a CIA front. They were fucking bad. My, my, uh, my dad's cousin was in it, Harold Lee. He was in it. And that was how I kind of ended up in it because there's, I was coming out of Korea at that time, and there's kind of legacies in, in 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 the army, especially in airborne and rangers and SF. I had two uncles that were in Task Force 160 Special Operations Aviation right there at fucking Fort Campbell, the Frost Brothers. They're now private helicopter pilots and bodyguards for guys in the fucking UAE and uh, uh, fucking. Big name guys in the Middle East. Some one of them's in the UAE, the other one's uh, in um, Dubai. And um, they're older than me by about five, six years, and they are fucking shredded. They're on, they're juiced up more than me. And I think they're six, early sixties. But if you looked at them, you'd never know. They carry fucking 
those little fucking scorpion submachine guns, you know, the new one, the little fucking plastic one, not the old CZ scorpion, but the new one. They got those pistols and shit. And uh, executive helicopters fly his ass around. But uh, they came out of task force. But I just fucking, I couldn't enforce law. If I if you made me a cop, I'd be Judge Dredd. Yeah, you probably. Yeah, would. yeah. So uh, I can't really say I blame you though, because yeah, I mean I have a couple drinks in me too, and like yeah. I'm just like I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. If it was the wrong dude, happens. if I saw something, he's you know, making maybe, me mad. <laughs> some dude, you know, maybe killed his kids or something, something fucking weird like that. I'd lose it. You'd You'd be be like, like I can't. Pop. Let, oops. I can't hand you over. They might let you go. So I'm gonna end this now. You know, it'd be like that. <clears throat> I get it. Like I said, I saw you do it, so I read about true crime all the time. I get, I get it. I try to be understanding, but there's a limit. <laughs> mm. Ira says, uh, "Nice top and horns, Jen. Thank you very much." Yeah. yeah. As we mentioned, we're going out after the show. Yeah, there's enough people here. Stand up, Jen. Stand up, really? Jen. I got. I'm trying to answer anybody's. Yeah. Look how cute this outfit. It's okay. Because it looks kind of baggy. Just stand, but don't move around the, the post. Well, what look at these I, little, look at these little shoes. Turn sideways, Jeff. Look at these little cute little fucking shoes. I have boots on, but yeah, that would look better. You can't really see it. Push your foot up. Where you want it? There you go. It's not dark. It's too dark. Put your foot right there. That that foot. Look at these. These cute little sandals. I wear these all the time. Yeah. These are like my these are like my day shoes because they're super easy to put on because they just have like a zipper on the back. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all about convenience, baby. I just like you know what I mean. Especially if something looks good and Wait. it's really easy to put on. You put it back. You fucked it up. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, I'll tell You're you. You're not what the to boss do. of me. <laughs> Why are you tell me what to do? I can tell I'm you helping. This. You're you're not. <laughs> it's too dark in here. Yeah, I know. It's too dark in here. I'm gonna turn the lights on. They are on. Make them a little brighter. Ew, I don't like that. Why? That, so looks, that looks terrible. You guys, is, does it look better like this or did it look better before? And then it's like glaring right in my eyeballs. Oh my God. It was just one adjustment higher. No, you did that one too, like that's right in my face. Okay, here. What did, what did yeah, turn that shit off. Turn that one down. Not off, just down. Yeah, there I'll turn go. it off. You know what I mean. There Put it back go. the way it was. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's okay. the way it was before, actually. Um, the Phantom says, Jenny, since you like ghost films, yes, I do, then I recommend you check out the 1997 anthology-style film called Campfire Tales. I've heard of that, but I don't think I've ever seen it, actually. A uh, pretty all-star studded cast and good ending twist. Definitely purchase. Okay, I wrote it down over here, so I definitely will like look into that, because I love anthology movies. Sebastian, I have heard of that, but I haven't seen Sebastian it. Sebastian was saying... He saw something here on YouTube about poltergeist phenomena. It's a video called, uh, what was it with? The Elusive Force. Uh, I haven't seen it. I want to see it, though. It sounds good based on kind of just what he said so far. I'm not sure. See, I asked what it, what it said. It's about telekinesis, yeah. What he said. We'll have to watch that and like see if we can do yeah. a show about it. You know, that would yeah. be good. I can add it to the topic. It's recurrent listening. spontaneous psychokinesis. I believe it's telekinesis, but of the unconscious or subconscious mind. I was never able to consciously do it. You just allow it to happen. And it just it just happens. You're kind of allowing it to happen when you're in real heightened state of emotion. And it does things that, so far, it does kind of stuff that I would do. But I'm scared of it. It always feels like an outside force. I was afraid it would do something I would do, but the bad shit that I would do. Because <laughs> there's a lot of bad shit you would do. Yeah, so, you know. Like I said, that's why you've never you've never done anything to me or, like, hurt me or anything like that. But it's just, like, I'm always wondering if, like, if he got mad enough at me, it's like, would some kind no. of brick come and, like, hit me in the face or oh, something like from somewhere? No. Like, you know, you never know. It's you might get real mad one day. It, it, it mostly seems to be dispar displaced frustration. If I'm real frustrated and I can't do anything about something, shit will get, start flying off of Like it pulled part of the dam, pulled some of the statues down, pulled some of the railing down out of, the, out of that last kitchen we were at, out of that last house. Throw things, but you can't control it. it anything that was thrown, 
never hit anybody. Well, take that back. It hit me with a pin, but it didn't hurt me. Right. Man, if I if if I had shit flying around every time I was like frustrated and couldn't do something about something, I'd be in big trouble. There'd be shit flying around all the time. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I don't have that ability. You know? Yeah, and when when the object moves, it doesn't move normally. It's not being thrown in an arc or anything. It's thrown kind of like in a straight line. And then when it hits, it doesn't hit with as much force as you'd think it would. Kind of like Kind of like it had pulled a punch or something. Like it had pulled the punch at the last minute. You know, it was a lot better when I was younger. Yeah, a lot stronger. But um, whatever it is, it's it's not supernatural. It's something that something that could be explained by physics, probably quantum physics. And we don't quite understand it yet. I'm sure aliens know all about it, especially if they're traveling between stars because they're probably using machines that are built upon those principles. Things that like telekinetic because some of that shit looked like it teleported because it came from other rooms. There's no way it could have got in there through closed doors, that kind of stuff. And I don't think and I don't think matter was penetrating through matter. It was too fast. I think it was just kind of teleporting. Sebastian brings up uh, two good films, The Fury and Carrie. Yeah, we've reviewed both of those films, and they are both excellent. Uh, and then Kelly says, yes, The Fury, one of my faves. I feel like that a lot of people talk about Carrie still, like the Brian De Palma one from 1976. But a lot of people don't talk about The Fury, and The Fury is actually really good. I forgot which one that is. That was also a telekinesis one. We did a review of it, like, yeah. probably a couple of years back. I'd remember it if I saw it. I feel like, wasn't that... I was going to say that that was also Brian De Palma, but maybe not. I remember it wasn't John Cassavetes in it. The director that was also in Rosemary's Baby. I don't know. I think he was in that too. You'd know it if you saw it. We've, we've seen it a couple of times. <laughs> CB said, I love ghost films when the twist is the ghost is the victim when they were alive. Like the movie. Is that MoMA? I don't think I've seen that one actually. I put up a review yesterday of one called Birth Rebirth, which was actually like quite good. It was like a Frankenstein type story. That was kind of fucked up. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was Brian De Palma. So he did kind of two. He did Carrie and then he did The Fury. The Fury came out in what? 78, 79? I want to say. Somewhere around there. Yeah, John Cassavetes in The Fury. Yeah, but didn't he explode at the end? Well, spoiler alert. <laughs> didn't he explode at the end? <coughs> I remember I don't him remember that. Oh my God. It's a good movie. We I know we reviewed it. I know we did. I don't remember it. Okay. I remember the entity. Yeah, well, we reviewed that too. Yeah. Well, that was based on the Doris Bither. <coughs> well, that was yeah, but that case. was also a psycho psychokinesis. Yeah, thing. although the ending okay. of that is bonkers. Yeah, I liked it when I was a kid though. They tried to freeze the poltergeist. Yeah, we're gonna freeze the. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. Who came up with and that? And how high saw, were they at the time? I don't remember if I saw a poltergeist. I think I. Pretty much, I, I, I think I saw Poltergeist and the Entity after the, the Mammoth Mountain event, not before. Well, I think the Entity, when did that come out? I think that was 82 when that came out. Yeah. I could be wrong about that, but I thought it was 82. Yeah, but it didn't mean I saw it, you know what I mean? Right, that's I what I mean. It's movies, like, yeah. if you I didn't, wasn't old enough to go to movies. Back in those days, if you yeah. didn't see it in the theater, you didn't see you it see for it. like yeah. several years afterward. I remember thinking that when Mammoth Mountain was going on, I, rem I remember thinking remembering that damn scene with Luke Skywalker fighting Darth Vader and Darth Vader fucking making the wind blow and, and pulling things off the walls and throwing it at him. I can remember that. That was the only thing I had uh, to equate what what it was. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, it could have been something like that. Because me and Red were talking about it. He's like, what, this is like something out of Star Wars? Is this aliens? What is, what's doing this? Is it the Force? Mm. I was just, but at the time I was just thinking, of, I thought of that damn... Darth Vader throwing shit, and I, I remember going, nah, it's not that, it's a ghost. You know, I thought it was a ghost. As you probably would. Yeah. At that time period, and if yeah. you were a kid and stuff. Because it seemed like an entity that was doing Yeah, it seemed stuff. like an outside force. Sure. Felt it was, we could feel it watching us. It definitely had a presence to it. 
Yeah, the Phantom says uh, that new Kirsten Dunst film Civil War looks pretty good and is getting good reviews. I'm definitely going to check that out because Kirsten Dunst is hot as fuck. Yeah, we've been wanting to see that for a while. Yeah, I'll probably see it. Um, some of the ex-military guys that I was listening to them talk about it and they said it was bullshit. Uh, that whoever they used as a... Um, okay... <clears throat> Probably what they did was is they got some old because it's about um, it's told from the, the point of view of uh, some in media people news reporters. So probably what they did is they got a hold of news reporters that had been in civil wars sometime in the past, and it's seems to be that's what they used as a model. The problem is is that warfare is constantly changing. And some of the stuff that happens in this movie, according to ex-military guys that I kind of trust, said they're just totally impractical and that that would never happen today. You know what I mean? This is, especially if this is supposed to be happening 20 years in the future. Because, like, there's no mention of drones. And the future of all warfare is going to be drone warfare. And when you say drone to an American, they're so retro. They think of the Predator drone, the thing that flies around and shoots missiles out of and destroys tanks. It's not what a drone is now. It's a little tiny quadcopter that runs after a dude. So I got it on video. Fucking Ukrainian dude running from this little Russian drone, running around a tank, and it fucking just jumps on him and blows up. Boom! And, it, and I was like, I was terrified for the dude. What can you do? It's not a living thing, and it's a little, little spindly thing. And he's trying to hide from it. And uh, I don't think he even had a weapon, the guy. He was just in a uniform. And even if you had something like an AK or an, an AR-15, you'd have a hard time damaging something like that. Because, you know, a rifle bullet's very small, and it's not moving. I mean, it's, it, a rifle bullet's very small, and it's not in the same place for very long. It's moving. So it's real easy to miss something, you, even though the bullet was just a fraction, a, a half an inch near it. You still missed it, especially if it's something spindly like a, like a quadcopter. What you'd need is like a shotgun filled with birdshot. You you could hit it that way, but they don't issue out. They're, you're going to start seeing soldiers being issued with anti-drone personal weapons, like a little four-shot, twelve-gauge sawed-off shotgun pistol. That's that would have worked probably. But uh, no, that little drone. He's running from it around a tank, and it's looking for. And the other drone's fucking recording it because they're working together. And it's not. It's remote controlled. The guys are looking through it, but it also has touch screen stuff. Like they just touch an image of you in the screen, and they go attack that, and that fucking drone will just go right in there, no matter what you do. It's AI will home in, and, and when it gets a foot from you, it blows up, and it killed that dude. So that's really the future. Little tiny drones. They sit on the ground like a landmine, looking. Solar arrays on them. You walk near it, it jumps up off the ground and fucking runs into you and blows up. Or maybe it just has something like a twenty-two long rifle round in a little tube and it just touches you with that. It boom and it just kill you like a, like that, you know. Um, and just so they say the movie's mostly just based upon like old-fashioned shit and um, shootouts and stuff. That's not the way a future civil war is going to be like. Well, I'm not going to cry because it's just a movie. So. Yeah. But a lot of guys had high hopes for it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this might be kind of an accurate portrayal of what the shit would look like. What it would really look like is a uh, tax on the stock market. In other words, like, shorten people's stock. Like, why blow up a fucking... Although that's not super cinematic. It's not it? cinematic. <laughs> but they're doing that now. You know, like, fucking Bud Light did some shit that their customers didn't like, so they fucking stopped fucking... Buying the shit, it fucking stock started to plummet. I think some people were shorting stock. You can, you don't have to drop a bomb on a fucking company or a building, or you can just destroy its its money. You know, you can do it electronically. So you're gonna see a lot of shit like that. Um, but I think it'll probably just go down the way it went in the Soviet Union. It just evaporates overnight, and it and then it. The deal, the thing, the problem was when the Soviet Union collapsed, they didn't have what we would call states. Not really. They were real weak. Everything was very centralized. If the United States evaporated, it would just be Washington D.C. 
other states would be fine. A lot of them would make more money without without a federal government. So there's like a the, the state governments are a backup. I don't think there'd be any fighting. It would just evaporate. Uh, Winslow brings up Phantom of the Paradise. That's a great fucking movie. Yeah, great movie. Uh, we reviewed that too. And Sisters. That's another Brian De Palma movie that, again, a lot of people don't talk about. And that is a fantastic movie with Margot Kidder. We reviewed that one as well. I think we both. Because I looked it up the other day because I'm like, wait, did we do that movie? I was like, I was pretty sure that we had. Because I knew I wrote a big long thing about it for my blog. But I looked up and yeah, we had reviewed it. But it was a while back. So we did do both of those. Yeah, that's a great fucking movie. Uh, Tammy's talking about the new Joker film with Lady Gaga. Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be a good idea. I haven't seen the trailer, but yeah. The I don't... trailer looked pretty cool. Um, some people are hemming and hawing. Well, you know, the, the, you know, they're just going to be a cheap knockoff. But you never can tell. I mean, look at Empire Strikes Back. Look, you know what I mean? That was better than the original, you know? Better than the first one. Sometimes the sequel's even better. They're saying it's going to be a musical. But it may not be a musical as you're thinking. They might just do some musical. The Joker, I'd imagine, is probably real delusional and hallucinates. So maybe that's where the musical part happens. In his mind, it's a musical. That'd be cool. It just has to be shot right. Yeah. But I, I think it'll be good. CB said, have you heard that a remake of Interview with a Vampire is being considered? Yeah, well, I mean, well, they did the series, which actually I saw the first couple episodes and it was actually pretty good, but like... Um, it wasn't the same story, though. Well, they kind of did their own thing with it, but it was kind of still in the spirit of the books, I felt. Yeah. But if they do the movies, like I said, I always kind of wanted them to do the actual trilogy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of just what we got which was interview with the vampire was a good film even though i bitched about tom cruise being in it like back in the day but he did a good job that was one of his best movies it was actually one of his best movies like i said because he's playing kind of a douchebag so it's like so he's always good at Jen that. doesn't like him but he's in the short guy mafia along with me you know and uh no fucking i think tom cruise did a fucking great lestat i think he did a great lestat now he was not as described in the book lestat actually Looked like a 16 or 17 year old guy. Yeah, because he was real young. He was real young when he got turned into a vampire. So he didn't quite look that way. But I still think that that was a cool portrayal of the stat. Well, I was I always heard that Anne Rice, when she was writing the book, um, the model that she used was Rutger Hauer. But by the time it came around to making the movie, obviously he was too old. Yeah. Um, to play Lestat, but that's who she was picturing. A young Rutger Hauer. Like a very yeah, like a very yeah. young Rutger Hauer. Yeah. That's who she was picturing. Although I also heard that she thought that he was good after all. That he was. He was yeah, good. she um didn't like it at first, and like I said, you know, I can't really blame her for that. But like when the movie came out, he did do a good job, you know. And like I said, it's famously on this show. If you're new, I really do not like Tom Cruise, but um, but I will watch shit that he's in. You know, I've seen like a lot of his movies and I am willing to, you know, say when I think he's good in a movie, he's best generally when he's playing a dickhead. Yeah. Because I kind of feel like that's closer to his actual personality. So he's not acting per se. Maybe. That's why I thought he made a good Lestat. Exactly. Arrogant. That's what I mean. So, and like I said, that and he seems... was good looking, man. He was good looking in that movie. Okay. He was arrogant and the motherfucker was an immortal vampire. And he didn't need money because he would just steal your money and move in with you if you're rich. <laughs> he turned you into a vampire. And, that would be uh, the best. He was just this arrogant fucking I vampire. To, I thought when it was cool. I read those back in the day, I wanted to be a vampire so bad. I'm yeah. like, I would just totally. Yeah. I would just find some rich douchebag that cool. was an asshole, and I'd just be like, yeah, yeah I'm just gonna kill you and take all your shit. <laughs> now a lot of people don't know. And then just live in your house. A lot of people don't know that Anne Rice lifted a lot of her concepts were actually they, they came out of fucking Blackula and Scream Blackula Scream with what's his name Marshall could, yeah yeah the, William uh, Marshall I think his name William is. Marshall yeah who he was a great vampire fucking as, as uh, Mumble Walde god I love the Blackula movies yeah they're good real good some of the uh, and they're just they're just because they're of those so titles, awesome because of those titles and it being black exploitation, a lot of white people won't watch them. They think, well, it's well, kinda, they think, oh, it's going to be super it's cheesy. Gonna, it's not. No, it's they're not. good. They're, they're really good. Solid. Like, legitimately, objectively. Yeah, good. they're very solid vampire movies. 
And uh, when Eddie Murphy came out with Vampire in Brooklyn, I was an Eddie Murphy fan. I was like, okay, well, maybe this is going to be good. All right. And watch it. And I like Vampire in Brooklyn, too. And uh, you can see how whoever made Vampire in Brooklyn also had seen the, uh, the Blackula movies. They kind of homage it a little bit. No, I don't know. Did you like? Did you like Vampire in Brooklyn? It's all right. I don't it has love some it. Comedy in it. it I don't had, love it. It had to have comedy in it because. Of but it's the better cast. than its reputation yeah, would suggest. I, I think a lot of people are like hate it, but I didn't hate it. I, I thought it was. It. I thought it was pretty good. I, I own it, and fucking um, every now and then I'll go watch it, and it 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 holds up to me. It's just another solid vampire movie, and Eddie Murphy's in it. You know, if you like Eddie Murphy, then you're gonna like the movie, especially if you like vampire. I mean, if you ask me, but. You know, a lot of people, oh, those shitty Eddie Murphy movies. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You just see Beverly well, Cop he, 1 and 2? He's see? made a lot of shitty movies. Yeah. But Vampire in Brooklyn is not one of them. No. I kind of feel like the ones, like, after he went for more, like, family-friendly kind of stuff. That, those That's when he went downhill. Because I don't really like those family-friendly 48 movies. Hours was pretty good. Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 was a lot better. Although 48 Hours, I don't, I liked it more back in the day. Yeah, like when it, it came now, out, kind of tired. when I watched it now, like yeah. recently, because we watched it probably like a year ago, and I didn't yeah. like it as much. Like I no. still liked it, but I didn't like it as much as I did like it, back in the old days. It's a days. stale format by today's standards. I, maybe that's why. And it's, it's a cop movie, and it's not very fun. It's not very fun to watch. It's trying to be hard boiled, like like an old seventies cop flick, that's which it was to. back then. Yeah, but it doesn't. It, it it's it's just kind of dated. Um, Which is not the movie's fault. I mean, no. you know, that's it was all it for is. a different audience. Sure, but the but that got rectified with Beverly Hills Cop one and two, because those movies were fun to watch, and they're still fun. They're still fun because we watch. just watched them not long ago. Now three is kind of a shit show. It is, but it has some good moments too. It's just, but there's uh, there's supposed to be a new Beverly Hills Cop movie coming out on Netflix, and I don't know if it's out yet. It may be. I thought it was supposed to be out this summer. Yeah, I want to see it. That's what I heard. And I saw the trailer, and the trailer looked good. And looked... I think they got all the surviving cast yeah. back. Like, some of the people have died uh, yeah. subsequently, but, um, you know. From the trailer, it looked good. It looked. It did, actually. It, it looked like a more of a modern movie, but it had some of, you know, fucking Eddie was looking good in it. And um, Eddie did fucking great in Dolomite Is My Name. That's, that God, was I a, love that movie. That was a classic. We own that one, too. Force. We had that one too. Um, I love that movie. We watched it like two or three yeah. times. Coming to America Two was okay. It was pretty good. Yeah, uh, I didn't love it. What, yeah, it wasn't as good. But as it was original. pretty good. It was pretty good. But it was pretty good. Yeah. It, the problem with it is that it's PG. It should have been R. That's kind of the problem. With that was the problem. Movies. And that's the, the thing. That, I get it. They're trying to like appeal to the widest possible audience. Yeah. But, nah. Yeah. Nah. That was a problem with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's downfall was. Him trying to make family-friendly content. Yeah, fuck that. He was listening to Bill Cosby too much. The wrong dude to listen to. He should have kept For many shit. reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should have kept that shit fucking hardcore like he did. Yeah, yeah. just, you know, yeah. play to your strengths. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But and, the, and the stupid thing is, like, ironically, Bill Cosby noticed this, ooh, this family-friendly guy, and then guess what we found out about him later on. So it's like, you know what I mean. Yeah, we got a super chat. Thank you very much, Jeffy Art, for the super chat. I just started rereading the books that True Blood was based on. I still need to read those one of these days. Way better than the HBO show, in my opinion. The stories are way more fun and better written. Honestly, most of the time, I'm going to say 99% of the time, the book is always better. Well, because in a book, you're not constrained by budget. You can, you know, you can write as many fucking pages as you want. You can describe stuff. You can leave it up to people's imaginations you can put like much more shit in there and so i kind of feel like the book is almost always better um not always because i have talked about a couple of situations since y'all are talking about vampires one of my go-to examples that i like to bring up is that i liked the movie of the hunger from 1983 the tony scott movie um much better than the novel which was written by whitley streber um, crazy person. Crazy person. Yeah. And author. Um, man who was anal probed by aliens. Yeah. How dare you? By an Electrolux vacuum. <laughs> by an Electrolux vacuum cleaner. Please go back and see our review of How Communion you? if you don't know what we're talking about. If you've never seen, uh, what's the name of that movie? Communion. Communion. The movie. You it's based on the Whitley Schreiber book. You gotta see it. I can't believe. Christopher Walken star. Every time I, and I've seen this movie like. Can't believe Walken Maybe three or four times. 
I can't believe that this movie exists. Yeah, it's the same. And I can't believe every it's time just, I watch it, it blows my insane. mind. Who was this made for? <laughs> I was like, this is fucking bonkers. Yeah, and this it, movie. And it kind of has a sinister element. It's kind of like uh, imagine if fucking Close Encounters of the Third Kind was kind of like a horror comedy, but not really. It's just. It's a weird fucking flick. It's man. so weird. And I don't get it. Yeah, starring, starring fucking Christopher, Christopher Walken, Walken, who's playing this movie straight. You know what I mean? He, as he, straight as, as he straight as he can. can play but he's things. winking at you like this is some fucking crazy ass shit. And he totally gets <laughs> anal probed. <laughs> they, they, they cut. The fucking tube comes out of the alien wall. It goes up in his booty hole, and it's the size of a fucking vacuum cleaner hose. And it goes back in, and he looks. He looks at the aliens, and it fucking. And then the camera looks. It looks at him in his eyes, and he goes, "How dare you? Oh my god! How dare you?" So like every He's now like, and then, just <laughs> we still to this day. I think we just did this two days ago. Every, yeah. Randomly, like one of us will look at the other and go, "How, How dare, dare you?" you? <laughs> yeah. If some shit goes down, you're not sure you don't like it. You're like, How dare? You? <laughs> Fucking Christopher Walken. It's awesome. Getting a damn vacuum cleaner hose up his booty. The weird, like, okay, so that was awesome too, but I think the best, the, my favorite part of that scene was I, you know what I'm like, like, I'll just imagine all kind of scenarios. I'm like, so do these aliens have, did they have like the whole Electrolux, like, wall mounted yeah. vacuum cleaner like system? Central system, yeah. Right, central like system. a central system yeah. for like anal probe stuff, like yeah, all yeah. around. So every yeah. room, in case you need to anal probe somebody, yeah, you can whoop. just whoop, pop it out yeah. of the wall and be like, boop, and like, you know what I mean? And then they showed the aliens. Because you never know. The, when the you aliens have to all do that. looked different depending on what their function was. Some of them are just like square with legs and like a, like a piece of toast, kind of like. Powdered Toast Man from fucking... Oh, my God. I remember, toast. yeah. Well, he wasn't like, entirely a... He, yeah. he, just his head was just toast. Head. Yeah, that's right. And then this he was, was like... And like, then he had like a muscular like superhero body. The size of toast. They'd be dancing. They're blind dancing. And he's going, oh, yeah, I love you guys. I love you guys. He's this is the weirdest this fucking movie. Fucking I've movie seen a lot of fucking weird movies in my life. Yeah. But I think that was the first movie where I was... My mind boggled. I'm like... Yeah. Who did they make this for? Imagine like, who if you were on LSD. paid for this? Imagine if you were on acid watching. Who that. did they think was gonna watch this? Yeah. I'm just, I'm mystified, and it's fascinating. It's a wild shit, man. It's fascinating. This is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen because I can't figure out. I read the book a long time ago when I was a teenager. I don't really remember that much about it, other than reading it, going, "This dude's insane for real." Like, I think. Um, but the fact that they made a movie about it and it just. It's the the weird thing about it is I can't tell if they're trying to take it seriously or if they're making fun of it. I think it's both at the same time. I think Yeah, I think that's what's freaking me out. It's just it's I can't it's I can't of... settle on a tone. I'm like, are you are we is this a serious story? Are you is this a black comedy? It's like what of, how are you coming at it? I think this? it's kind of like the movie Bloodsport with based upon the stories of Frank du Ducks. Dukes, all right. Who's fucking lying? He says up, Dukes. We say. Ducks. Yeah, I say Ducks. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Ducks. Yeah, to me. Who's lying about going to the Kumite and fucking this death matches and shit? And <laughs> at the end of the fucking movie, it actually says, you know, a fucking gives like where he lives now and how many people. This it's just like like it really happened. Right. Well, evidently the director, okay, of that movie. Didn't believe a fucking word Frank Frank Dux said. Yeah, he just which he was, shouldn't yeah. because he's, he's just full he, of crap. Yeah, he's just listening to this dude's <laughs> fucking stories that he's telling, and and he's going, man, this is some fucking wild shit. Okay, I'm it's gonna like put this, that in a movie. All right. Okay, I'm gonna put that in a movie. I don't yeah. believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. A good all right, movie I'm gonna now. put that. So right, the the guy who directed fucking <laughs> Bloodsport and and fucking wrote all the, and definitely did like the screenplays and shit I love for it. it. Didn't believe a fucking word of it. It's no. a movie based upon Frank Dux's lies. Sure. Yeah. Well, so like he's said, a great source of material. This yeah. dude just sit around just lie and lie and lie and tell this fucking story. I was like, right, so I'm going to make a movie on this shit. And that was a hit movie. We fucking it loved it. Bloodsport. I got it. I own it. Bloodsport's great. I have a hard time watching it now. Just because it's, it's kind of boring now. But back in the 80s, we, when you actually kind of believed... In magic, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Do you believe Do in magic? magic? Well, I've said it in other shows before, you know, if you're a regular, you know. We used to fucking, before I was in the service, you know, fucking, we used to hang out at fucking places like 7-Eleven, play video games like Ghosts and Goblins and fucking Spy Hunter and shit like that. And behind us would be a 
magazine rack that had all kinds of stuff in there. But one of the things they had in there was like Kung Fu magazine. Yeah, or Black Belt. Or magazine. Black Belt. That was another. And you'd one. look at that shit, and some of the gags, some of the games that we were playing were based on Kung Fu. There movies and shit, you know, Karate Kid. You weren't quite sure in those days. Maybe they can do magical was shit over there. Maybe they, maybe we can throw a chi ball. Yeah, you weren't quite oh. sure. Hey, man, the Chinese been doing it for thousands of years. Must be something to it, you know. It just we had all rationalizations to it. Uh, to it. Well, that's on another side of the planet. They they know shit we don't know, you know. And yeah, oh yeah, those little dudes have beat up Mike Tyson. Big de- fucking right, man. That dude's, <laughs> that dude's a seventeenth degree black belt in fucking jujitsu. Hell Jeez. yeah, he beat up Mike Tyson. We talking about fucking magic. Look, look, look at all that shit he's got on his wall. Look at that outfit. Hell yeah, you know just. I mean, fly, with an outfit you know? like that. Yeah. We still to this day, like we there's the um not Ichiban but the other Chinese buffet that we go to the cheaper, we call it call her the cheap Chinese whore. Um, <laughs> the one that we go to that's closer and cheaper. Right next to it yeah. is a martial arts thing. Yeah. It's, and we keep, every time we pass it, we're like, should we poke our head in there and be like, do you guys do Dim Mock? Yeah, Dim Mock. Yeah. It's, 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 it's obviously for <laughs> little kids. We want to learn. Dim it's mock. obviously for little kids. You know, the, the, little, the, little, the little science kids. I'm not going to do that because I'm not a shit. dick, but you know what I mean? You don't it's, actually, every time I pass it, I think about it. You actually don't go there right and learn how to door. fight, you know? No. Um, well, but like I said, I think it's good for kids to learn stuff like that because yeah. they learn discipline. They learn, yeah. you know, it's like, it's, you know, acrobatics. It's acrobatics. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good for your physicality. Yeah. It's good for, right. like I said, discipline and stuff like that, which is good for everybody. If you to want to learn. learn how to fight, you can fucking go to an MMA school. Yeah, probably. That, so. That's effective. And that's really what the Kumite was talking about. And that's really was based upon what what uh, Bruce Lee was talking about, that there had to be new styles of fighting that are not really styles, they're just effective. You know what I mean? (laughs) And we got to be able to fight each other in a realistic way. He was talking about fucking MMA. Yeah. It started as ultimate fighting, I think is what they called it. Yeah, they did back in the day. I remember when that happened, and then it became other other kind of... I remember when ultimate fighting started, we're like, man, is that even legal? Yeah, I think everybody thought that. Wow. Like, wait, can they do that? Yeah. I guess they can. Well, that's why Frank Dux made up the fucking story about the Kumite. That doesn't sound legal. Yeah. You fight each other with no style and people get hurt and shit. That's the way it is. Some dudes die. Well, that's, that happens. So, well, that happens dudes have been died. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, boxing. dudes have died in boxing yeah. lots of times. Yeah. You know, you get your bell rung too hard. Joseph says the Jaws movie is better than the Jaws book. Thank you. That is another very good example. Um, I did read the book. Uh, by Peter Benchley, if you didn't know. And, um, yeah, the book is good. I've read a couple of his other books as well. I read The Deep and, like, one other one. But, um, the Jaws book has a bunch of, like, unnecessary subplots, including one where I'm pretty sure that Brody's wife has an affair with Hooper, right? I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think that happens in the book. And I'm just kind of like... Okay, I don't love that. Well, it's, I can see why they eliminated that in the movie. Because that makes her, like, less sympathetic. That makes everybody less sympathetic. You know what I mean? Like, you can get away with it in a book, but I didn't love it in the book either, to be honest. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, the Jaws movie is better than the book. I will say that also. Um. Yeah, so they're talking about, everybody's talking about Christopher Walken and how awesome he is. I love Christopher Walken. <coughs> he is, he's one of those dudes, I'll just watch anything that he's in. Yeah. Like, whether he's taking it seriously or whether he's just making a joke about it or whatever, it's just, like, he's always, like, fucking interesting to watch. Just, like, Nicolas Cage or people like that that you just always want to watch it because you're just like, what's he going to do this time? (laughs) You know what I mean? You're talking about Bruce Lee if he was the real deal. Yeah, Bruce Lee, uh, yeah, he was, I guess you could say he, he was the real thing. But you have to understand he was an actor. And he came out of Chinese theater, which involved a lot of dance. Um, he did do a couple fights, kung fu style fighting matches, but and, and there, there are some records of him doing it. And he did pretty good. The thing is, is that he was an actor. He couldn't afford to fight. If he got hurt, then he wouldn't be able to work. Right. So he trained mostly on his own and around other people and read books and was trying to come up with philosophies of stuff. He was right about everything he said. Could he kick an average dude's ass? Hell yeah, he probably could. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, he was oh. in good shape. Yeah, he was in real good shape. He didn't weigh much. I think he only weighed 145 pounds. But he was real wiry. Real wiry. Real I don't think he good. had much uh, body fat. No, no, very little body fat on him. Uh, he weighed 145. I think he was about 5'7". Um, he was very fast. Um, accurate blows. A uh, little balled up fist made out of bones. But there's always a limit when it comes to body weight. That's why in... In, when you when in any kind of organized fighting sport, guys are kind of like organized by weight class. You can't take a 145 guy, 145 pound guy, and put up against a 220 pound dude. I mean, he'll just sit on you. You just can't win. It's 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 the same reason why ma- mass has a quality all its own. Quantity has a quality all its own. That's a good way to put it. Um, He, what would be a good way to put it? You could go back in time and get Bruce Lee and bring him to today and show him MMA. And he goes, yeah, that's what I was talking about. That, that's yeah, because that be. absolutely was what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, he goes, that's what I was talking about. And they said, okay, do you, you're not an actor anymore. We're going to make you a fighter. And he goes, what would you have to do? What would you do, uh, uh, Bruce? Bruce, what would you do? And he goes, well, I'm going to have to get in the gym. I have to put on about 20 pounds. Okay, and I have to get a good ground game because Bruce didn't have a ground game. That wasn't in the. It wasn't wrestling. It was striking, like you know what I mean, like pugilism, punching, you know, and kicking. So he'd have to put in a ground game and become partially a wrestler. Once he knew that task, Bruce could have done it. Hell yeah, yeah. he could have done it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, everybody said he was disciplined. He was good. Within his weight class limitation. Sure. Now, if you put Bruce Lee in there with Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson would fuck him up. Yeah, he would just go... Yeah. But he was, like, a lot bigger. He was a, Mike was a lot bigger in his prime. I mean, that's why in boxing they have yeah. weight classes. Because, yeah. obviously, if a dude that's, like, twice your fucking size... Yeah. They're gonna fucking pound you into a right. crimson stain. We kind of had this fantasy when we were kids that a little guy like, like Bruce Lee could beat up Mike Tyson. No. Uh-uh. One, I'm not saying he would get, like immediately his ass beat. Like, he might get some good blows in, but uh, yeah, he's out, he's gonna get crushed. The first fucking blow. I mean, the dude Mike is Tyson. big. My, and, well, he was pretty big. He wasn't, he wasn't a monster, but he was pretty big. Much bigger than fucking um, than, than Bruce. But people forget that Tyson, Mike Tyson in his prime was fucking fast. He was real fast, and he moved. And he was very powerful. He had fucking big, powerful arms. And uh, he had a lot of mass. He was armored. You couldn't hurt him. Bruce Lee couldn't hurt him. He'd hit him in the head. It would just boom. He'd just shake that off. Because fucking Bruce, uh, fucking uh, uh, Tyson Brain had been hit by fu- been been hit by big dudes fucking on it all the time. Sure. He could just shrug him off. And he had good defense. But uh, no, would have now. If you were to take, if you were to take Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson said that if he was young today, he'd be in MMA. He said he doesn't like boxing. He thinks it's too limited. So, it, well, there it, are a lot of rules. It's a different but, sport. It's a different yeah. sport. Yeah. But I mean, there have to be a lot of rules because you're essentially just like yeah. punching the shit out of somebody. Yeah. If you took fucking Bruce legally, <laughs> and then you took fucking Mike Tyson and gave him a couple of years to adapt into into fucking MMA and put them against each other, Tyson would win just mass alone. Yeah, well, yeah. But I don't think they'd be in the same weight class. No, of course not. And right. like I said, there's a reason that right. that exists. Yeah. But Grand for little ass- white guys, little, little light guys, fucking, yeah, Bruce Lee was the shit. And well, yeah, you, in, his, in his weight class, yeah. he would absolutely yeah. and if kick you had, everyone's ass. If you, had, if you had Bruce Lee in an average bar with average dudes, yeah, he'd fuck you up. He'd yeah, you. he was a trained. He could, Honestly, he even train. if they weighed more than him, yeah, or were you. bigger than him, right? But between trained fighters, that's a different. game. Yeah, that would be different. That yeah. would be a different story. But like, yeah, in in just like a random bar full of yeah, like yeah. random schlubs, yeah, he would probably yeah. kick everyone's ass. Right. He was very athletic, very fast, and he knew he knew a lot of fighting philosophy. Granthers asked the Seven Eleven on Grange Road. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See, he well, knew what, Mike used to work. He at. knew what Seven Eleven. You know what Seven Eleven we're talking about. Playing that spy hunter game. Looking at the Kung Fu <laughs> magazines. 
and then going back to Mike's house and fucking drinking, fucking uh, drinking clandestinely, drinking fucking twelve packs of beer and shit. Clandestinely. Yeah, because we weren't old enough to drink. Well, you know, we'd that's... get people to buy it for us though. Of we'd course, just be down there and drink. You know, it's the way it was. It's a rite of that passage. That fucking Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. Yeah. And weed every now and then. Nice. Yeah. High Desert said, I miss hanging out at the Circle K and getting magazines like Smash Hits. Yeah. I mean, in the U.S., it was called Star Hits over here. Hmm? It was called Smash Hits in the U.K. But I used to buy that, too. They used to have it at the 7-Eleven next to my grandma's house. So I used to go buy that. Because that's what all, had all the good, like, new wave shit in it. Yeah. That's, they had Duran Duran and Culture Club and Psychedelic Furs and Modern English and all that kind of stuff. Like, back in the early 80s. So I used to buy that all the time. Yeah. For you foreign people, we had this cheap-ass wine that tasted like Kool-Aid. It tasted great. Called Mad Dog 2020. They actually stopped. They still... Them. No, they still got it. Yeah, but they don't call it Mad Dog anymore. They just call it MD 2020. Yeah. I think that um, got youngsters on TikTok yeah. have yeah. just rediscovered it. Yeah. Mad Dog 2020. It tasted... I, I heard there was a whole thing. It was cheap. It came in a big old flask. Flat flask. It tasted great. <laughs> It tasted really good. It was good on the rocks. I don't know if it was wine or if it was a malt drink. It might have been a malt drink. But it was pretty. It would fuck you up, though. It would fuck you up. It was pretty strong. It was but cheap. it didn't taste super strong. No, it didn't taste strong. You just fucking guzzle the shit. You were like, woo, it's like Hawaiian yeah. punch. Yeah, it was like a couple bucks. Real and cheap. then like an hour later, you're like, oh, yeah. it's not like Hawaiian but punch. But I thought about it. Mad Dog 2020. It makes you crazy and gives you good vision. You get that Mad Dog 2020 vision. That's, that's that what <laughs> I see everything so clearly yeah. now. Yeah. They had fucking flavors like strawberry. Yeah. Cherry. I mean, strawberry was watermelon, good. Watermelon. Kiwi. They had Water, the, watermelon was we good. We liked too. the kiwi one. It was fucking neon green, man. Kiwi. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Ki I feel like kiwi, kiwi was like such a 90s yeah, flavor. Kiwi. Because remember Snapple had that strawberry kiwi. That was like their big thing, which was actually pretty good. I don't even know if they have that yeah. anymore. Yeah, Grandfather said, my 11-year-old son is a gray belt in BJJ. He loves it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, I you know, kids yeah, love that shit. It, it, and it is a good thing for them to do. Yeah. I kind of feel like that's a really good thing for them. I to was do. fucking thinking about going in, getting into fucking um, MMA here. They got you would probably be really good at that. Yeah. Just I mean, that might MMA be fun. School. Like I said, if I could afford it, I always, I kind of always wanted to do like either, I don't know if I wanted to do yoga, but I would rather do like a dance class. Yeah. Because I like dancing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can go, I can go dance at the club. Yeah. And I'm a good dancer, I yeah. think. Right? I, I'm, I'm in good enough shape now to actually fight. Yeah, so. I could, I could go to MMA school. There you go. I, in my age, age class, I'd be fucking killer. Those dudes are probably all, fuck, those guys are all probably juiced too. Yeah, they're talking about Christopher Walken. Uh, yeah. I got way behind. Yeah, they're talking about Christopher Walken. Love that about him. He's all in. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. why I like Nicolas Cage, too. Because it's yeah. like, look, if they're going to give him a paycheck, he's just going to... Yeah. He's going to... Not going to phone it in. He's going to, like, lean into that shit, even if it's completely off the fucking wall. That's another... I respect that. I respect that. Nick Cage, I wouldn't call him a, an actor. I'd call him a movie star. He's not a big of movie star as fucking Tom Cruise, but I'd call him. Although he star. should be, he probably should be, but he's got a great reputation that that bitch will work. He will work, and and he's what's funny cool. Is people that, love Nicholas Cage. Yeah, come on, everybody loves Nicholas Cage. They're starting to cast him in some shit that's kind of cool. <laughs> For a while, they casted him some fucking crazy shit, dumb, dumb stuff. But uh, well, like I said, he's he, a meme now. So. He needed money, yeah. so he, he would, would just do like anything. do anything. <laughs> Yeah. But like I said, I respect that. I respect the game. I respect the hustle. Yeah. Like, look, you got debts. Yeah. I got debts. You know, somebody <laughs> offers you some shit. It's like, hey, we want you to be in this movie where, <laughs> who knows what? It's like, you know, you you wrestle an alien and you get butt fucked by an alien. What, okay, yeah. I'm 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 gonna do that. There, and he just like doesn't phone it in. No. I respect that. There was a good one that he did. Wasn't it called Pig? That's a great movie. Yeah, you think it's gonna go like John Wick? It and it. It never does, man, but it constantly, you think some John Wick moment's coming. It's just about a fucking It's a cook. drama, but it's just, yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. Pig was really good. Pig was good, yeah. I liked Pig a lot. And then, uh um, I think we, like, reviewed that, actually. Yeah, this shit was fucking all serious. 
<laughs> and then uh, I like the one where he gets uh, where he's in there fighting the animatronic animals. What was it? Willy, Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland, which, like good. I said, was yeah. based kind of slightly off of Five Nights at Freddy's, yeah. and then they made a movie of Five Nights at Freddy's, and everybody shit on it. Yeah. So if you like Five Nights at Freddy's, um, then probably you should see Willy's Wonderland because apparently that's like a lot better. I haven't seen the Five yeah. Nights at Freddy's movie, he was but every action. single person I know, other than one person, mm. um that I know like uh, said that it was like a shit sandwich. He was uh, in an action movie it was kind of like kind of like Alien or so not no kind of like Predator. And it was a shit sandwich, but he was the best part in it and he's fucking he always is. He's fucking really trying to channel some fucking acting and shit. Like, you know, even his version of the Wicker Man, I liked it because he didn't phone that shit in, you know? I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But it's pretty fucking entertaining. Yeah, yeah, he's it is entertaining. Pretty, it is pretty entertaining. It's, it's yeah. terrible, and it's kind of like shitting on the legacy of the <laughs> yeah. original. Yeah. So I'm kind of mad about that. If you like, if you like, but the, if you like the Wicker Man, and you want to see something like that, that can stick like like that, its own, but shitty, but also entertaining. Yeah, well, you see that. But, I'm saying, <laughs> if you see, but if you want to see something that lives up to the Wicker Man, see Midsummer. That bitch is good with Flo. When the Flo Pew is in it, Florence Pugh. Florence yeah. Pugh. I like that one. That one's as good as Wicker Man. I really liked Midsommar. I, I yeah. liked Hereditary more. Yeah. But they're two completely different films. So it's kind of, I loved, I also loved Midsommar. Yeah. I like that. I like, I, I kind of feel like, it's weird because I kind of feel like even people that are into Ari Aster's movies, there's kind of like, they're kind of like, you're you're either a team Hereditary or team Midsommar. I like yeah. both of them. You're right. I prefer Midsommar, yeah. I prefer yeah. Hereditary, but, and honestly, if you um, have four and a half hours to kill, there's a great video on YouTube where the dude explained, he wrote this huge long essay about every single reference in Hereditary. And it's a deep dive. We have that one, don't we? Yeah. You should see it again. It's a deep dive. He talks about all the symbolism in it. He talks yeah. about it. And it's really, really, I mean, he went fucking deep on the shit. Me and J- me and Jen went to go see it in the movie theater. We took uh, some friends with us. Who is it that we have with us? Shauna and Eric. Shauna, yeah. Shauna and Eric. Yeah. And uh, we were watching it, and I just immediately started to reject the movie, man. If I could, I, and I fell asleep during it. But I, I saw it again after that, the second time, and it was better. I liked it better. Every time I saw it, so I think I saw it a third time. And much. Liked it going you on gotta, in that well, movie. I had to watch it a couple times so much. before I got into it. It's like The Shining in this and not that there's like a bunch of conspiracy theories about it, but in the sense that it's like super super dense. Like all the symbolism in it, all this I mean, every single detail in that was like super super thought out. Oscar says Midsummer was ass. No, it was not. I liked Midsummer, man. Well, you know. He didn't you don't know you don't He didn't know. like Late Night with the Devil. Yeah, he like Late Night with the Devil. Midsummer. And I loved that movie. Midsummer was is is neo is folk folk horror folk horror neo folk horror, all right, and uh, that's that is the no they they nailed it, that that's that's the genre. I thought it was yeah great. I mean, and to be honest, like I loved Midsummer because it's really hard to do a movie that's unsettling that's almost like 99 percent set in the daytime yeah and yet somehow he managed it ari aster i mean he's kind of a genius i watched his um i I guess most people that know about his movies like know that he made a short film called what the hell was the name of it um uh, something about the johnsons or shit i can't remember the name of it now and it's like 25 30 minutes long and I watched that the other day, and that is like super. It's not a horror movie, but it's still like super uncomfortable. Read what Oscar said. What? I saw Late Night with the Devil again. It was great. I was too drunk the first few. Well, go. thank you. See Midsummer again, man. That, that bitch was fucking great. I fucking yeah. loved Late Night with the Devil. Yeah. I am so glad that it's getting. And I know that there's going to be a backlash because anytime like all horror fans get all I wanna, I wanna excited about something, like some cranky little bitches are going to be like oh wasn't that good because they have to like shit on everyone's good time but i thought it was phenomenal and i was like as soon as it was over i was like i'm gonna buy this shit yeah, like as soon as this bitch. comes out i love this shit we're gonna get that bitch on steel book if we can i love that movie yeah i wanted to see it again 
Um, Winslow said, you said you liked early 80s new wave groups like Duran Duran and Culture Club. Yeah. How about Devo, Oingo Boingo, oh, yeah. and The Nails? Yes, yeah. all of that. All yeah. of that. Honestly, like, and because we're old. I don't know if you know. Um, so I grew up with that stuff. I was born in 72. Yeah. He was born in 69. So, um, so I got into new wave in the very early 1980s. First bands I got into... Uh, the Police, Modern English, Psychedelic Furs. I think those, and Duran Duran, those were like the first four that I got into. And as it went on, like, so anything like New Wave, Post Punk, anything like that, I'm like super, super into that still. And it's cool because that era was so um, fertile that you still discover bands nowadays that were kind of forgotten from that era that were still fucking awesome. So, you know, but I love all that stuff. I love Duran Duran. I love, I was I wasn't a huge fan of Culture Club, but I like some of their stuff too. But it's like I liked, kind of the more, gothy kind of stuff. Like I'm real into like Echo and the Bunny Men and that kind of stuff. I love all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the strange thing about the Johnsons. Thank you. Yeah, that that was Ari Aster's first. Uh, it was a short film, about half an hour, and I watched it about a month ago. <laughs> I was messed up. It was a little bit messed up. Like I said, it's not a horror movie exactly, but it um it broke some taboos for sure. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. It's on YouTube. You can watch. I think it's on YouTube, or you can watch it on. I think I watched it on Daily Motion or something. What time's the club open? Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Okay. Yeah, we probably got like another half. About hour. a half hour. You want another drink? Yeah, let me get one more. Okay. Before we go. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Erica said Hereditary was so creepy. Honestly, and I know that there's like two mindsets about Hereditary. We saw Hereditary in the theater. Tom did not like it. Our friends liked it. That movie stressed me out more than pretty much any movie had since probably like The Ring, I kind of feel like. Because The Ring kind of freaked me out when it came out back in the early 2000s. That was the last one that I remember seeing in the theater that was kind of like... Ooh, that kind of like freaked me out because I don't get freaked out. I watch horror movies all the time, but Hereditary, man, that did a fucking number on me, man. That fucked me up for like, for like a week or two afterward. I was like, ha, ah, that was, I don't know. It, it really got to me. And I know it doesn't do that for everybody, but like I said, that's kind of the thing about horror. It's subjective. Um, everybody's scared of different shit. Everybody's going to react to different shit. So it's like, that's why I think it's kind of stupid that people are like, oh, that wasn't scary or something like that. Well, yeah, but it was scary for other people. And I kind of feel like that was what happened with maybe something like Skin of Marink, which was super divisive. I really dug it. Um, I didn't find it terrifying or anything, but I could understand, like, it really evoked a certain feeling. And if you didn't, I don't know if you didn't grow up in that era if you didn't it, it's one of those movies you really had kind of had to vibe with or not and like i said some people are not going to vibe with it and that's fine it didn't scare the shit out of me but it i could see it was really unsettling i found it very unsettling but i understand why other people did not because you know a, a lot of nothing does happen but like i said it's a vibe movie and if you're not on that wavelength then it's not going to do anything for you so i get it um, let's so they're all talking about Nicolas Cage now. Yeah. Uh, eight millimeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about, did we read the book of the extra? I read the, um, the William Peter Blatty novel. Yes, I did read that. Uh, and that's, it's actually quite good. It was based on a true, true, well, true-ish story that happened in the 1940s. What was the kid's name? It was a boy, actually. It wasn't a girl. But, um, his name was... It's not his real name, but um, he was known as Roland Doe or what was the other name they gave him? Ronald Mannheim or something like that. But it was like an exorcism that happened back in the 40s. But that's what it was based on. Oh, my God. Go ask Alice. <laughs> Holy shit. Everybody was reading that. Everybody was reading that. And it's like it's fake, right? I mean, isn't it? I thought I found out later that it was fake. But it was portrayed as, it was like a found footage movie, but in book form. So it was kind of like, don't do drugs, kids. We're going to write this thing like it's a real journal. It was that kind of situation. Uh, the Phantom said, when's Tom going to show his upgrades he made to the Grand Marquis? Photos Ooh. of the car. Yeah, you need to do that. Got a Grand Marquis story. 
yesterday I was on a Grand Marquis owner's group on, on fucking Facebook and there was a guy posting pictures of his Grand Marquis in, in his shop somewhere saying anybody need any parts off this and I said I need those uh, center caps there's these little plastic caps that go in the center of the wheels so you know those center caps all four of them how much he goes 80 bucks and I said okay yeah where, where you, how do I pay you and he says send it to uh you got Zell? And I said, yeah. And he goes, send it to this Zell right here. And he gave me the address. And it was a girl's name. So I figured, well, you know. He's... Well, Jesse could be a girl's name or, so, yeah. a, or a man's right. name. So I sent it there. And he goes, okay, I'll get back with you. I said, all right. And then today he comes back and he says, um, okay, I'm going to need $100 for that shipping. And I said, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. He's in Florida, evidently. I said, no, you're not. I'm saying, Ain't costing a hundred dollars no to well, ship I, that I, tiny I, and ass he goes, shit well, I, he goes, well, I tell no you what, way. send me fifty so I can process the order. When you get it, you send me the other fifty. And I says, no, nah, return the money. No, and baby. then he fucking blocked me. Yeah. So I called the bank and trying to fucking stop. He's that trying order. to get his money back. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he that was a scam right there. Yeah, it was a scam. Can we say what his name? Well, let's. What's his yeah, name? Yeah, his name is Boris Johnson. Name and shame. That's a fake name. That's that's named name after some politician shame. from another. Boris Johnson on Facebook. Fat dude. I don't think it was a real account. Although, it might not have been. I don't know. I, you know I'm going to let them investigate it. Yeah, they're investigating it. Yeah, they're I don't know if, we'll, if he's ever going to get his money back. He might not ever get the money back. I don't know. Camp Guy said, I haven't seen Hereditary, and my wife has, and so she won't watch it again with me. Okay. I didn't answer his question, though. Yeah. Car's doing great. <sighs> that random misfire code it disappeared when it put a new... Uh, uh, pump, as, uh, pump assembly in there. So, um, so then it went away. It's running fucking great because fuel pressure normalized. So no more misfires. Um, the door trim that went along the, the the year marquee that I had had real fucking tall door trim that went down to the bottom. They're like bumpers. So when you open the door, you don't bash the car next to you and it doesn't bang up your shit. On one side of the car was starting to deteriorate. It had a hole in it, and I pulled it, and it just ripped. So I pulled all that shit off. So all of today, I was sitting there getting all the two... It was just held on with two-sided tape. Luckily, it, the fucking paint behind it is perfect, and there was no fading, so you don't see a line where it was protected from the UV light. It looks beautiful. It looks so much better without that big, fat door bumpers on there. So I ordered some uh, universal door bumpers that are cut for a car like mine, for Crown Vic, for only like 40 bucks. So I'm going to put new door bumpers, the little little narrow ones along the center, and it's going to be silver. The paint is fucking looking great. I was fucking actually buffed some paint. The car looks really good. Uh, got some other paint coming, that same Tourador bread. Because uh, it got a scuff on a bumper, so it's going to look fucking bitching. I'm thinking about getting 4.6, the little fucking metal emblems, and I'll put those up there on the fucking quarter panels. That might look really good. Because they, they came off a Mustang, might put those on there. The interior is looking great. I'm probably going to put a black carpeting in it. Headliner is fucking done. LED conversion for interior and exterior lights. It fucking lights up like a UFO. <laughs> Yeah, what I powerful was, headlights. What I was gonna say about what Camp Guy said was that when I saw that shit in the theater, I was so fucking stressed out by the movie. Like I wanted to watch it again because I felt like like I got the gist, but I felt like there was a lot of stuff that I missed. And I really wanted to watch it again, but it made me feel so bad that I took two years before I actually watched it a second time. Because it's like, every time I thought about it, I was just like, I really don't want to feel like that right now. Yeah. So it's just like, that's kind of the the shit that I'm talking about. Erica also says, I found The Witch unsettling too. Yeah, that is a that is a super unsettling movie. I don't think Tom's ever seen The Witch, actually. Mm. That's um Robert Eggers, the same guy that did The Lighthouse. I probably like it. You, I like maybe, The Lighthouse. Um, the Witch is set back in, what, the 17th century? And it's all in the English of that time. Yeah. But, yeah, it's good. I really like that movie a lot. And Anna Taylor-Joy is in it. Oh, I forgot. Just in case you guys ever want to see what gear looks like. That's Primo Bowling. 
It doesn't come out of some basement or anything. Shit's fucking super high quality. And what's funny is like dragon scales all over it. I mean, it's nice packaging. Nice packaging. I take this. This is one of the things that I take right here. Carl Skoga testosterone, 400 milligram. But you see, it's all quality stuff. People have it. People have a this kind of concept that it's just something that's just brewed up in some kind of fucking underground lab. No, man, pharmaceutical companies make this shit. All that's from all that's from another country. They just be funny where it's over they, to, where it's over just, the counter. If they just send it to you like in a Ziploc bag or yeah. something. <laughs> all that shit would be over the counter Unlabeled. in most company, most countries. But the West is uh there are certain people that want to fucking We're a little backward. Yeah, it's backwards and they want to profit off of everything. They want you to go to fucking doctors and fucking buy from their companies so they cut up man, you go to other countries you just buy that shit at fucking CVS over the counter. Which you should be able to do here, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's like very, same thing it's with very insulin. Frustrating. Why isn't insulin like that? Just you know. Well, I always wondered when... that about you know back in my fertile days. Yeah. It's like why couldn't you just buy birth control pills? Like mm -hmm. was, you had to go through this whole fucking rigmarole. They had to do a whole examination. Money. You Money. had yeah. So it was like this big. Keep, I'm like, why yeah. this should just be available yeah. over the counter? They yeah. shouldn't like condoms. They shouldn't even ask yep. you a fucking question. You should just yep. buy it. It's not gonna hurt you. It's fine. So it's I don't know, but. Whatever. It was just like always this big fucking pain in the ass that you had to do it. It's grift. They're trying to grift money. Well, yeah, I know. It's like, I know. And that's like what's yeah. so frustrating about it. Because it's like, it's obviously people have taken this shit for like ages and it's yeah. it's fine. It's, most of the, most of the Western system is grifting. Yeah. And uh, powerful companies have bribed governments to pass laws to make them into monopolies and to keep competition out. That's all it is. Doesn't have anything to do with safety. They give a fuck about your safety. No, of course they don't. Yeah, they can um, kill you with one of their drugs, and they have total lack of liability. You'll never see yeah, the time. Like, oh well, we warned yeah. you. Right? They don't give. It's not about safety. Yeah. So yeah, they don't. That's but what they I got mean. Humans brainwashed into. The, oh, that's dangerous care. shit. No, it's just that it's no longer patented. Anybody can make it now. Yeah, exactly. And they want to sell patented medicine. So this reminded me, because they were talking about. Uh, 80s music earlier so we're at barbarella which is where we're going tonight after the show but we're going for the goth night last yep. saturday we went to the 80s night which they've been doing for 30 years i kind of feel like the yeah. 80s night at barbarella slash yeah. ibar just at a new location though yeah it's at a different location but yeah. they've been doing it forever and it's like it's still like the same crowd like you know it's it's an older crowd but they're all really cool so we go there last Saturday, dance my ass off, really good. Good music. Just 80s music all night. So randomly, I tell Tom at the middle of the night, I was like, you know what? Like a week or two ago, he played Sex Dwarf, the soft cell <laughs> yeah, song. Yeah. And I was like, man, that shit's been stuck in my head. Because every time somebody plays Sex Dwarf or even mentions Sex Dwarf, yeah. for some reason, I don't know, it's just such a. Soft an, cell, isn't it? Yeah, it's soft yeah, cell. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's such an earworm yeah. that. If somebody just has to mention it, and it'll be stuck in my head for, like, forever. So I just randomly mentioned, I'm like, man, you remember when you played, like, Sex Dwarf, like, two, and I danced to it and everything, and I was just like, that's been, that fucking song has been, like, stuck in my head for, like, two weeks. And then Tom says, with a completely straight face, well, that's because that's me. I'm yeah. the Sex Dwarf. Yeah, yeah. And I was just kind of like... Just you like this, you Oh my god. And Even I was though just, I'm taller than you. I'm, yeah, a, still, but, yeah, a bit. You're, like... four a, inches. yeah. Yeah, yeah you're about five. yeah, you're about three or four inches. But she's always in huge fucking platforms. And yeah, stuff, so, so so most of the time we look yeah. the same height. Yeah, because I usually have big ass platform shoes on. <laughs> but so he's like, yeah, it's me. I'm the sex dwarf, and it's just kind of like the fact that he just said that with a straight face, and he just like just said it like right. There I was, was drunk too. Yeah, it wasn't even a second. But I, and I guess that song. Go, yeah, I'm a sex. Dwarf. I love that. Yeah, I love that song. Sure. And I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna make you a shirt that says that. Mm -hmm. So I'm still laughing about that, and then our friend. Scotty comes into the bar. He's the one that's got all the call girls. Yeah. Yeah. Escorts. And he comes in and he's wearing a homemade t shirt yeah. that just says GG Allen shit on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I fucking lost it. I was like, Oh my you guys, I can't anymore with this. <laughs> and then like I 
Gigi Allen shit on me. Yeah. So it's, so I told him it's like because Tom was talking to him, I was like, dude, that shirt is amazing. And he's <laughs> and he made it and it was just like so, totally home. It was like iron on letters and they were all crooked and shit like that. I'm like, I love that. That is awesome. And he's like, it's true. Gigi Allen did shit yeah. on me in Minneapolis yeah. back in 1985 because he's a little bit older than we are. Yeah. He went and saw Gigi Allen in Minneapolis in 1985. And I guess um, Gigi Allen did like yeah. wipe some shit or throw some shit on him. So yeah. he made a shirt about it. And I was just kind of like, I can't. See, this is what happens. I just, I just couldn't What's fucking take. It. Bob- I was still laughing about the sex dwarf thing, and then yeah. he comes in and this is yeah. Gigi Allen. What's funny? What's funny about um, Barbarella's is that uh, Saturday is is the new wave night. Yeah, it's the eighties night. Eighties night, and it, it's an older crowd. It's forty five yeah. plus, largely. I mean, they're yeah. young people coming there too. Young people coming in, they're like reliving the eighties and shit. And they're with their well, it's all new to them. It's new to them, so they're just like, "Woo, this is cool." And they're wearing eighties clothes and everything. Fucking, sure. I'm kind of wearing it wrong sometimes, but whatever. They're having a fun time. They know all the music. They're yeah. dancing to it, and these are like people in their early twenties. But what I noticed is that the that night is not the goth night. But I go there fucking dressed like I'm at now. It was just like goth type stuff. Yeah, and there's like some goth people there. There's just yeah. regular people there. There's all kinds of That crowd of tends punk people. Not, not to go on the goth events. That's only once a month. That's a younger crowd. That's where we're going now. But I've been noticing that one by one, them old dudes that are my age are starting to look more and more goth. Some of them are starting wearing fucking boots and the fucking pants, and I'm going. They're getting the shit off of Sheehan, or fucking well, uh, or Timu. Yeah. But they're they're starting to dress the part now. A lot of uh, remember that there's like five of them, and I yeah. remember them. I'm like. These are dudes all in their 50s. And I was like, they weren't dressed that way the last time I was Well, here. and they might be too, like, because the younger people yeah. that come to the goth night are, like, super decked out. Yeah. Oh, man, the fucking young goths of the day. They look, like, 20s. super death rocky. And They're like, awesome. super, They go all fucking out. Yeah, a lot of fantastic outfits. So, you know, you just go there in, like, jeans and t-shirt, you're going to feel a little bit yeah. like, well. I'll dig up a photo of what really... they look like, an example. <laughs> But that's cool, though. And honestly, yeah. like, Memento Mori, which is the goth night, even though it's largely... He plays, like, some kind of goth and post-punk and stuff, like, early in the night. But it's usually... It's more, like, industrial EBM type stuff, which I kind of feel like a lot of goth nights started going like that back in the 2000s, um, which I used to bitch about back then. And I still kind of bitch about it nowadays because I don't... I like some of that stuff, but not, you know... A lot of it's just kind of samey. So... But the weird thing about it, um, you know, and our friend is the DJ, and we've noticed that as the younger crowd comes in, like, you play some kind of newer, in more industrially kind of shit, like, nobody dances to it. You play some old Susie and the Banshees or something like that, all those 20-year-olds are all out on that dance floor. Because, like I said, it's new to them. Like, it's not, you know, it's not like, they're not like us old farts where it's just like, oh my god, we're so sick of this song. Because yeah. it's like we've been listening to it for 30 years. They haven't been. And so, and they like that better, apparently. So he started kind of like playing more older shit. Because that's what, that's what the younger crowd is dancing to. Which kind of blows my mind a little bit. <laughs> kind of blows my mind a little bit. Did you find anything? Because I really got to pee. Yeah, yeah, hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go pee. I'm just going to show you kind of, guys, what what the younger crowd looks like. And I'll show you one. Um, this chick's got a lot of pictures. The younger ground tends to look like that. Give you another example. That's straight out of the early 80s. Yeah, you'll see them like, you know. 20, 21, 19. 
They're just bringing it back to the classics, man. That kind of stuff. It's a wonderful outfit here. Then, of course, they got the eye makeup. I'm sure you guys remember. Some of you older people remember all that. But that's how the young people come. They come looking like that. Yeah, looks like a bed. Yeah, it looks great. It. Making an effort. Yeah. Making an effort. Because I really don't like this whole, yeah. oh, well, I'm not going to dress up to go out. I'm They're just going to. Teaching each other how to put makeup on. Well, like I said, they have um, access to a lot of stuff we didn't have access yeah. to back in the day. They had access to more information and more clothes. It's like they could do makeup tutorials and yeah. hair tutorials and like all kind of places to buy clothes and stuff. Yeah. But we didn't have any of that stuff. That's so a, that's every, our tribal look. So every that's time right. I see like some twenty-year-old like all fucking dressed, and I'm like, that's awesome. I love that. I love that. And like I said, they seem to like the old music better. Which I do too, so I get it. But that makes me happy. It's it's very edifying. <laughs> ah. Let's see. So, um, High Desert asked me about the trailer for Maxine. I still, oh my god, I still haven't watched that yet. Um, I saw X, which is amazing. I still have not seen Pearl. I'm ashamed to say, but it's on my list for real because I really, really want to see that. And I'm definitely, because, and I'll definitely watch it like before Maxine comes out. Um, Victor says, never heard of Gigi Allen until just now. Never heard of Gigi Allen? <laughs> just what? read an article about it. And wow. A friend of mine was friends of him. Friends yeah. Of him. He's kind of, uh, he's quite famous in the, in the goth and punk scene. Um, but that's why, like the second he walked in with that fucking shirt on that said Gigi Allen shit on me, I was just kind of like, oh my God, I can't deal with this part right now. And the fact that it was, like, homemade and, like, iron on and stuff. I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. That's amazing. Ah, but, yeah. Um, what I, oh, shit. I don't know if I ever brought this up, and I meant to. But, you know how we do. We keep getting distracted and whatnot. Like, Some much, of the much young much ones now. show up like that. They're just I, fucking totally tatted up and, you know. <laughs> they have wearing next to nothing. What I was going to say is that we have a new patron named Stephen Vincent. So thank you very much, Stephen Vincent. I've seen him in the chat a couple of times. Yeah, thanks, I haven't Steve. seen him tonight. Um, I thought I had it written down to mention on Wednesday's show, but I don't remember if I did or not. Because I kind of feel like we got distracted. Like I said, we always get distracted. And I don't mean anything bad. It's just we we get distracted and like start talking about whatever bullshit. And like, you know, you know how it happens. Yeah. Kelly goes, Peekaboo, love that song. She's talking about Susie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That girl that looked like Susie. And a lot of them do the Susie thing, kind of. I don't know if I could pick my favorite Susie song. Yeah. Maybe Candyman? Uh, man, there's so, she has so much good God, shit. Susie, I mean, all, their shit, all their shit is good. And the Creatures, yeah. the offshoot band that she did, creatures also great. Venus and Furs from, from the Creatures. Yeah, that's a Velvet Underground cover. Yeah. Um, shit, that whole Tinderbox album was good. Uh... Fuck. I also like the I think Tinderbox is probably my favorite album then, of theirs. What was the other one? Superstition? No, what was the... the there yellow, was one called Superstition. That was the yeah. yellow one that had fucking... The yellow album that had Cities and Cities and Dust. Cities and Dust on it. No, it was called in, Superstition. Huh? I thought Cities and Dust was on Tinderbox, actually. No. Superstition later. It also had Fear. Fear of the Unknown. No, see, that was later. Yeah, the later stuff. I think it was Tinderbox. What, oh, no. Superstition, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Superstition, I thought. Album or Superstition, album. I thought, was the purpley one that had "Kiss Them for Me" on it, which was way later. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but I thought that's how I remembered it. Tinderbox came out in eighty six, eighty seven. 
somewhere around there. Pretty sure that had Cities and Dust on it. Pretty sure that also had Candyman on it. Because I remember having that one. Yeah. All their shit's good, though. Like, every single one of their albums, that they're, you can't go wrong with any of their albums. All of them are good. Tinderbox is my favorite, but... Yeah, Kelly said it was definitely later. That's what I thought. I don't want to hit Google. Okay. I mean, you can. Ian Finley, The Cramps, and Alien Sex Fiend. Yes, please. Yes, please. 45 Grave. 45 Grave. I saw Alien Sex Fiend yeah. live. I saw The Cramps live, too. Um, Maybe, I think it was a couple of years before Lux Interior died. The Cramps are fucking great, man. Alien Sex Fiend's fucking great. I love Alien yeah, Sex Yeah, see, Fiend. that was Superstition. Yeah, that was the purple one that had Kiss Them for me on it. Yeah, and it also had Cities and Rocks. No, Cities it didn't. Dust. That was older. What are you talking about? That was. Hold on. Let me look at Super. Because uh, I had that album and I thought it was on there. Cities and Dust came out way before Kiss Them for Me. Songs. Because I remember when Superstition came out. Because I don't love Kiss Them For Me. It's a super, super overplayed. Okay, yeah, I guess it didn't have that up. It yeah, has, I, that's what it I told has you. Kiss Them For Me, Fear, Cry, yeah. Drifter, Little Sister, Shadow Time. Yeah. Silly Thing. Uh, yeah, that was way older. Gotta Get Up, Silver Waterfalls, Softly, Ghost In You. Yeah, I had that album too, but I thought I thought uh, Cities and Dust. No, that was older. Okay. Look up Tinderbox. Was that on Tinderbox? I thought it was. I, yeah. had, I had that one, too. Sebastian said O.J. Simpson passed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that, like, a little bit. Well, we didn't really talk about it, but... I was kind of like, good riddance? Candyman, Swiss Chill, The Unrest, Cities and Dust. Okay. Told you. All right. I just had it flipped See? Flip Don't around. argue with me. Tell me what to do. I'm Because <laughs> I know what yeah. I'm talking about, and you always want to argue. I don't want to hear it. I'm like, look, I was there. I remember what happened. There's a Cities and Dust 12-inch eruption mix on that same album. That's a great album. There, uh, I had both of those albums. Both of those albums were great. Yeah, and then uh, I had some of the the, the the compilations. Greatest part one and two, I think. Yeah. Greatest part. They were pretty good. Yeah, I had that. Too. A lot of her old stuff. I have that somewhere. Right. I'm kind of into. They did a cover of um, "This Wheels on Fire." Yeah. Which yeah. I which I kind of love. Yeah, that's, that's on my Spotify list also. I forgot who did that originally. It wasn't It wasn't Iggy Pop, was it? No, no, no. The Passenger, that was Iggy Pop. Passenger did it, yeah. yeah. I, knew, I knew she did it. Iggy Wheels Pop. on Fire was, uh, who the fuck did that song originally? Shit, no, I can't remember. I remember it was the ab- Absolutely Fabulous theme song. Yeah. The original was. But Susan the Banshees did a cover of it. <laughs> so yeah, but... Um, CB said I liked Marilyn Manson until I realized he was a douchebag. Um... We're friends with a guy he knows. We have a yeah. uh, goths of our He's era. He's from here. He is from here. Yeah. Goths of our era have a complicated relationship with Marilyn Manson because... Because he wasn't goth. Well, <laughs> one, yeah. And two, it's like a lot of us were into this all this cool shit beforehand. And then Marilyn yeah. Manson came out and got kind of mainstream popular so then suddenly everybody started thinking all of us were into Marilyn Manson. We're like, no. Yeah, you see, th- this is the problem. The goth scene did not sound anything like Marilyn Manson. It really didn't. It sounded nothing like that when he appeared. He came out and it was really hard rock. Is, is how he's kind of like industrial rock. Kind of like Nine Inch Nails. And we didn't consider that to be goth either. That was I mean, poppy. Nine Inch Nails are pretty good too, but they're, they're better. Nine they're Inch Nails poppy. Were better. So all of a sudden, this dude fucking crashes our scene, kind of with some of the look that we had. Yeah. But not quite. And then we're getting, we'd be walking down the street and go, Marilyn Manson! They're yelling at us, yeah, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, I used to, oh my who God. Who the fuck is to... Marilyn Manson? I was like, I had to ask him, who the fuck is Marilyn Manson? We don't know who that dude is. Well, at first we didn't know. Yeah, and then was. we found What are you out talking who he was. about? He had a couple of good songs, though, that they did play at the club. Um, they, uh, what was, I, I can't remember, it was off his first album. Um, I liked his covers, but that's... Yeah, it was a cover. It was... uh, I like the Dope Show, but I kind of feel like I only like that in retrospect because David J. from Bauhaus covered it. I think it it was a Eurythmics cover, wasn't it? Yeah, Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams, yeah. They uh, they would play that at the club. He had good covers. They they played that a lot. His own shit wasn't that good. Not really. And and he wasn't goth. He tried to get into a club in the French Quarter, my friend's club. Pierre owned it. It was called the the Hellfire, uh, Hellfire Club. 
It was across the street from uh, from uh, the, the Crystal. And that was at uh, Decatur and right off of Decatur Street. I'm trying to remember what the name of the intersection was. And it was kind of a speakeasy. It didn't have a license. They would let you in if they knew you, and they'd let you in. And inside there was it was a private house that was a club. It had a DJ booth and everything. It had a fucking dance floor and two bars. They didn't charge you for alcohol. You paid though. You you, yeah. you don't you donated. Okay. Well, that's how they get around. The that's how they get around. Laws. Yeah, that's that's where I met Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer was in there. And he was cool. Jerry Springer was very cool. He was real into like fetish. Yeah, everything. it was nobody in there. About twenty people. You and wouldn't in one, know, but... in one of the rooms, a fetish event's going on. A guy's got his girlfriend up, maybe a wife, uh, got her up and fucking uh, doing light bondage on there. And fucking Jerry Springer's in a big old fucking seat next to me. And there's a couple other people in there, like three, four people watching. And, and I said, I said, what do you think of this? And he goes, oh, man, you guys are great, man. He was already loaded. He was already, I love this place, man. You guys are great. Fucking, uh, he was cool, dude. But he would go up, mostly hang out on Bourbon Street. But uh, Marilyn Manson and uh, one day, now other shit had happened, okay? Brian Warner, his name is. Yeah, Brian, yeah. And our DJ friend who's fucking hosting tonight is Dimitri, friends with him. who DJs who de- yeah, at he's a, the night we're going to tonight. Yeah, they, 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 he knew him back in the day. Yeah, he Because he's from here. He's from here. He's from here. They were friends. He liked him. He's a good guy. Uh, just Yeah, it's, he's yeah, all right. He's not, so the... Um, What's the guy? Trent Reznor. Yeah. Trent Reznor shows up and he's hanging out in the club and we didn't know who he was. Because when you look at him, he was just a dude in Bermuda shorts, like cargo shorts and shit. And uh, it went around in the club like, hey, that's that guy from Nine Inch Nails. That's that Trent Reznor guy. It's like, why is he wearing that? Yeah, why is he dressed like that? (laughs) Yeah, that's what we were thinking. He's dressed like a totally normal dude. We thought you were cool. Yeah. Well, place started getting more packed. He evidently wasn't a hit with the girls. He left. And I was standing out on a damn balcony. This is the first time it happened. First time I saw him. I was standing out on the balcony. With some, it might have been my first wife, but I probably wasn't married to her at the time. And you see Reznor walking towards his uh, Ferrari that was parked on the side. Because of, of course the, he had a Ferrari. He had a Ferrari. And it was a used Ferrari, though. It wasn't a new Ferrari. It was a used Still. Ferrari. Gets in his Ferrari. So try hard. And when he turns the fucking car on... What comes blaring out of the fucking open window was head like a hole. Head like a hole. And everybody just goes... <laughs> I mean... Motherfucker's listening to his own Come on. And he leaves, okay? Oh, my God. Well, Pierre heard about that. And just laughed about it. Laughed out. Laughed. Well, we were getting so much shit from Marilyn Manson. About <laughs> Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Fuck. A couple weeks later... We're not even... Leaving. I didn't know that this happened. I heard about it afterwards. I was, I was in the club. Trent Reznor and Marilyn Manson show up at the gate because to get in, you had to ring a doorbell and Pierre's wife had come down and opened the door and there was bars on the door. And if she knew you, if you're, or, or, you know, she, or if she didn't know you, she'd ask you who you were and she'd let you in if, if, you, if you gave the right answers. She opens the door and it's fucking Trent Reznor and Marilyn Manson. And she goes, hold on one second. And she goes upstairs and goes, gets Pierre. Her, her husband. Wait, I gotta check. I'm assuming they're married. He comes down and he goes, can I help you? And he goes, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to go in. And he goes, who are you guys? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm Trent Reznor and I'm fucking Marilyn Manson. He goes, oh, Marilyn Manson? No. And he shut the door on the guys. Nice. And they were fucking pissed. Oh, I love it. They were fucking pissed. I love and it. And that was the story I heard. I love it. I didn't I see hope it that's happen. True. I was fucking in dance. I of, hope that's true. But no, I heard it, you know, that's from, awesome. from, 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 the, They're like, mm, the, nah. Bridget, you know, that I, I told, told you about Bridget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridget told me that story. She was the, okay. the she was the uh, one of the. I hope that's true. She was one of the uh, bartenders there. Bridget would. That's she awful. was a wild. Bridget was wild. Bridget was. I didn't know it, but at that time, Bridget was underage, and she was tending bar, and would fucking um, take her top off a lot, fucking flash people titties and shit. And she was seventeen. But she didn't look it. So yeah. She was in her 20s. She had been working in the fucking French Quarter doing peep shows and shit and stripping. For years, people didn't know she was underage. I mean. 
Yeah. It's a lot more lenient. She's just it was a lot more lenient then. back then and she was goth, so people just went okay. Not saying that's a good thing. Okay, I'm just yeah. saying that's it was. <laughs> but Bridget told me that. Oh yeah, he wouldn't let him out. They were furious. Yeah. I hope that's true, though, because that is hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. Well, like I never I said, saw him again. Look, man, I never saw him again. I'm not going to say like goths are petty. Where yeah. I don't know if we're are we? Kinda. Yeah. No. Well, at that time we were so fucking pissed at Marilyn Manson. I get it. We I wouldn't have let him into my everybody club. Everybody was either. pissed at that motherfucker. I wouldn't have let just, him into we my club. We were getting either. so much shit because yeah, because of, of him. And, uh, we didn't not, even like his fucking music. No, no. And, and they were all getting lumped together. It's yeah, like, we, get, we don't yeah, know anything yeah, about we, that. We That's some mainstream nobody shit. Nobody had anything against Trent Reznor. It's just that he was... He not was, really. He was... We, we, I considered Trent Reznor to be a decent rock ripoff of Skinny Puppy. Yeah. That, well, honestly... It was rock, but, and it was mainstream. It was decent, but he was ripping off Skinny Puppy. Sure. And, and the nasty. thing about it, like, I got... Uh, pretty Hate Machine. I didn't buy it because um, I was broke. But I had a friend that recorded it for me as a lot of the music that I got back then was. So when that came out, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And I used to listen to it all the time. Now, I went and saw Peter Murphy in St. Petersburg in 1990. I think it was November, I want to say. Yeah. Like, after, not too long after Deep came out. Yeah. Um, which was like his third solo album. And Nine Inch Nails opened for him. And the funny thing was that it was at uh, Mahaffey Theater in St. Pete, which is a sit-down place. It wasn't like a stand-up club or nothing like that. It was a theater. So everyone was sitting down. Nine Inch Nails came on and played. Everyone sat there and stared at them. Yeah. Because I kind of feel like Pretty Hate Machine had come out, but it wasn't, like, widely dispersed. Yeah. And, like, a lot of the goths were like, hmm. Yeah. We're just here to see Peter Murphy. We yeah. don't really give a crap about you. Even so everyone just kind of, like... They did good shit together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking back on it, Trent actually did a lot of good work. He did? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and he, in time, kind of became a part of the scene. But when he first showed up, he was an outsider. And uh, fucking... It was a very selective scene in the fucking eighties and the nineties. All right, we're kind of snotty, I, you know. Yeah, and if you are some kind of a recording artist in that genre, those fucking that crowd will put you under a microscope. Everybody that we know, pretty much, that records is not famous in their own town. Like um, Ben V from uh, Ludovico Technique. From Ludovico Technique, I like Ben, and I like Ben's music, and I'm friends with Evan, who's his. Who's, who is the keyboard player and does most of the writing. They don't like Ben. Just for, personally, they just don't like him. But he's very popular outside his city. And it's, they just think Ben is arrogant. And they don't think he's a real goth. But I think he is. He is. It's just that they're putting he him He does under, hang out at... I mean, you know, he, he does hang out more, in the clubs they, and stuff. They so. put him under more scrutiny because he's yeah. recording. Well, we're a very... Look at Ludovico Technique. That, you'll see that's... They're a good band, yeah. They're a good yeah. band, yeah. That's... I'm just saying that we're very... Um, I get... We're, we're kind of insular. Yeah. So it's like if somebody is like coming in there, we're very... And like we're very um, wary of posers. Yeah. Or like people coming in there for yeah. nefarious purpose because we have had that happen. Yeah. So we're always just kind of like... We don't mean to be like super bitchy. No, real fast but... to fucking point of make a dude a poser if he's recorded because there's a lot of that but I don't think he is I, you know, I, no I, I don't think him. so either he, he's the real thing it's just that they thought that certain key people in the fucking local scene here thought that he didn't treat them with the proper respect so they'll fucking flip that shit right around oh they're drama for sure drama queens but look it's late it's time for us to start um, yeah up. now one thing that CB said that I want to address was not everyone with a fetish is a pervert actually I don't think and like everybody has fetishes nobody with fetishes everybody, is a like, well, everybody has preferences and everybody has preferences so I would it. never say like look yeah. we like I said we're in the goth scene where there's a huge overlap with like the BDSM scene and stuff like that and we've been to a lot of parties and stuff like that so I would never ever um, get on anyone's case about their fetishes or anything like that as quote unquote weird as they were um, you know, some of them I'm not into, but if other people are into, then that's yeah. cool. Like, we don't really, like, 
we're not really like that. So I gotta plug this in. It's gonna die. Any yeah, I mean, I would too. never call anybody a pervert that was in unless they were. You know, there there's a couple things that we all know what we're talking about that I will give people shit for. But honestly, as long as everyone's consenting adults, I don't really give a shit what you do. <laughs> I don't give a shit what your fetish is. I don't give a shit how weird it is. Um, you know, it's it's all good as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Vice says, well, I doubt that many of those who called Marilyn Manson goth were familiar with the Bauhaus Susie and so forth. Yeah, I, they weren't. And I kind of feel like we've kind of had that. It, go, it comes and goes in waves because every time some gothy thing goes mainstream. I remember when it happened, um, one of the things like when Beetlejuice came out in 88 or whenever that was. And I remember walking around the mall and people yelling at me, Beetlejuice. And I was just like, bitch, I've been dressing like this for like six years. Like what? And this was back in the eighties. So I was just kind of like, I don't, I, you know, I'm sorry that you're just coming to this now. <laughs> like this is just now coming to your attention. But you know, people had been dressing like that for a really long time, like longer than I was into it, too. So, and honestly, when Beetlejuice came out, I saw the trailer for it. I don't remember what movie I was going to see, but I remember saw, saw the trailer for it. And I was just kind of like, I thought at first it was a joke. I was like, oh my God, are they really for real? And then like when this movie came out, I was like, oh my God, they have a goth character that's like a real goth character that was like a normal, they weren't like making fun of her. She wasn't the villain or anything like that. And I was like, that blew my mind a little bit because I think that was the first time I'd ever seen that. Except maybe, well, when did Gypsy 83 came out? Because I kind of feel, it, well, I think that was later. But it was very rare to see movies with goth characters or punk characters that weren't weirdos or villains or something like that so just to see somebody that was like a sympathetic character was kind of a big deal and i was just kind of like holy crap i can't believe they did that so but after that came out like a lot of people saw it so i'd go to the mall just be in my regular self and people would be like beetlejuice yeah 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 you know what i mean okay I come on jim we gotta go man all right so been. we gotta go because yeah. It's about time yeah. for us to drive. It's about a half hour drive, so we gotta go. Um, Cause it opens at 9.30 or 10-ish or whatever. All right, so hopefully you guys had a good time this evening. Um, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for your super chats and all of that. Um, we will probably be back Monday to do a movie review. I don't know what the movie is gonna be because we haven't watched it yet, but we will find out together. So thanks for hanging out with us this Friday evening, and we will see you guys again on Monday night. Good night.